We're going to talk about liver disease today and cannabidiol. And I'm going to tell you what you need to know about this particular problem. Now, liver disease is tremendously uh, uh, expensive uh, for the entire country, and it creates a huge amount of suffering. There's all kinds of liver disease. Um, and what, what I've seen and I, all the evidence shows is that CBD is very effective in all forms of liver disease. It stops all of the processes and all of the pathologies that are involved, at least to date, that I can locate. Let me tell you more about that. So you know my background, um, having been uh, a physician for 40 years, working with the military um, as a combat physician, as well as being involved in disease management. I can tell you I've seen quite a number of liver diseases and the, the terrible trials that liver disease cause. More recently, we've seen an epidemic of hepatitis C uh, exploding within our country. And um, there are effective drug therapies, but they are very expensive and they don't work in everybody. Now, when we're talking about liver disease, it is really the home of some devastating types of problems. You've got the hepatitis B that was a plague earlier on in the country, uh, and in fact the world, and it still is a major problem. But you also have hepatitis C. You have uh, toxins that can cause damage to the liver and permanently injure it and uh, degrade life. You have inborn errors of metabolism, such as hemochromatosis, that can lead to liver destruction without our knowledge. It's the accumulation of uh, certain uh, minerals, particularly iron, as it gets deposited, deposited in the liver and creates toxic and inflammatory events. Also, the use of anabolic steroids, those uh, weightlifters who try to bulk up uh, for um, uh, winning um, medals as well as increasing their strength, um, the ball players, they all subject themselves to the potential for serious um, damage uh, to their liver. And of course, there's alcohol, the, the time-honored plague that causes cirrhosis and uh, continuing damage uh, to the liver, um, and leaving uh, the liver in, in destruction and many other problems. But you also have other types of uh, cirrhosis etiologies, which I'll get to a little bit farther on. Now, within the liver, just like all of the other systems in the body, we have an endocannabinoid system that in pathology gets out of balance. So when we're seeing these different pathologies, we're also seeing an imbalance of the endocannabinoid system. Our endocannabinoid system controls the neurologic neurotransmitters as well as the immune system uh, throughout the body and the endocrine system. It's also key and important to the metabolics, how our body works, how the liver works, how the pancreas works. All of these factors are very closely related to the endocannabinoid system and the balance that needs to be there. In so many cases, we're seeing an endocannabinoid deficiency type of syndrome, whether it's in one condition or another, uh, such as PTSD, um, these are consistently, we're finding major problems with imbalances there that could be restored and rebalanced. So the liver is no different than all of these other systems that we've already surveyed. We see uh, disturbances in the endocannabinoids uh, related to all of the pathology related to the liver, whether it um, has to do with uh, the blood flow or the inflammation or the vascular, all of these are related to disruptions and disturbances within either the receptors or the endocannabinoids themselves. These are the master molecules that are really controlling much of what's going on within the liver. And it includes the cannab uh, cannabinoid receptors type 1, type 2, and um, many other receptors that are working within the cannabinoid system. Now, let's talk about hepatitis C, because I've got a case study here to show you what the potential uh, is for cannabidiol working on this horrible, uh, uh, difficult problem. So, when somebody gets hepatitis C, 
there's an inflammatory response that goes on. The hepatitis, the C virus doesn't actually cause the damage. It is the body's immunologic response that is producing so much of the damage uh, that is going on within the liver. You get um, inflammation and then you get the, the death of some of the cells. You get fibrosis, you get additional uh, growth of vasculature, um, and you get scarring uh, effects on the liver. All of this is involved with that viral organism that's producing much of the inflammatory response rather than the actual destruction that the hepatitis C virus causes. It, it doesn't cause that much destruction. It's the body's reaction to it. And that's the case with so many different uh, types of viruses. Well, in uh, hepatitis C, this leads to fibrosis. Um, we do have some excellent drugs that uh, are blocking and killing the particular virus, but once the damage is done, uh, you've destroyed the liver, and that should be the end of it, um, barring a transplant. What we're seeing with cannabidiol is actually some of the reversal of this particular process. Let me give you an example. Now, I want to introduce you to this gentleman um, who is in Australia. He had hepatitis C, um, he had liver failure from it, and he had a liver transplant, but that wasn't the end of it. He continued to have a liver failure and um, a destruction of his liver. He was going to lose that particular organ. The organism was not contained. He started using cannabidiol, elixinol, um, in Australia, and over a period of three to six months, he had almost a complete recovery from the situation on the left where you're seeing ascites and they were taking fluid out, a couple liters of ascites type of fluid from around the liver and drawing it off so that he could breathe to where he's fit now and he can do almost anything he wants to, um, yard work, uh, whatever he needs to do. And that's all because the cannabidiol was working to reduce the inflammation and to restore the, the disease that, that was in the liver and the fibrosis and many of the problems that were going on. We see the same type of problem going on with alcoholism. And here is a case of toxins that are being introduced uh, to the liver, but they are uh, creating an inflammatory situation, but they're also killing some of the cells the hepatocytes that are there. There's an inflammatory reaction once again going on, and along with that inflammation, there is a destruction of many of the normal cells and tissues. There are new blood vessels that are forming in the area, and there's scarring um, that is um, widely generated. You also see some disruptions of the metabolism and the mitochondrial function within the hepatocytes themselves. All of this uh, is due to the alcohol as a toxin uh, producing these changes. Um, and once you get to a scarred down, completely fibrosed liver, then you're losing complete liver function and you go into another series of problems with vascular changes all over the body, including um, kidney failure as well as um, a neuropathy and a dementia associated with that. What we've seen more recently with cannabidiol is that it can reverse this process. I wanna tell you about a, a gentleman that I met in Los Angeles when I was speaking there in September. He introduced himself. He is now the uh, CEO of a company that is working in the cannabis area, but he found that using cannabidiol, it reversed his disease. He was so bad with his cirrhotic liver and liver failure that he was on the transplant list in Seattle. And at that point, um, he was going for his final evaluations when, in fact, it was just about uh, four weeks ago that he went in for his final evaluation. After using cannabidiol for three months, they refused to transplant his liver because he was no longer in liver failure. His liver had recovered. And seeing them in September, I saw that he 
appeared completely normal. He didn't have any of the hallmarks. He looked like a normal, healthy, 35-year-old man in the best of health. But he was, and he had previously been facing liver failure and a transplant because of cirrhosis and alcoholism. This is incredible, um, the potential that CBD could offer and prevent huge expenses. It probably costs about $500,000 to do a liver transplant. You could save huge amounts of money, uh, billions of dollars, um, if you could stop this particular process. Certainly, you've got to stop the alcohol and drinking, and CBD can help there as well, diminishing the cravings and the addictive component that is goes along with alcohol, as well as opioids. Now, the the final process when you have these types of ongoing liver disease is liver cancer. Uh, this is a terrible affliction, um, certainly is, and that's where many of the cancers that we that are in the peripheral body, such as breast cancer or pancreatic cancer or um, even uh, melanoma, they may metastasize and they commonly metastasize to the liver. Once cancer gets in there, it's very difficult, it's almost impossible to get rid of the cancer. It's a stage four disease, quite disseminated. Cannabidiol could also play a role here in helping um, to prevent and the destruction and the death from liver cancer because cannabidiol has anti-tumor effects specifically on the tumors, but it also has the ability to enhance the effectiveness of the chemo therapy and the radiation therapy if those things are going to be employed. Furthermore, you've got cannabidiol could play a role in these types of cancers by giving great comfort to the patient, to allowing them to relieve the pain, the anxiety, and the discomforts, allow them to sleep uh, when they're under, if, as they're undergoing many of these processes, if it's not successful in stopping the cancer completely. Now, one other thing, one other disorder that is on the rise in our country especially is fatty liver disease. And just as a matter of eating high carbohydrate types of foods, we are seeing the conversion of the liver into a disease modality. In fact, we're seeing fatty liver disease that progresses to liver failure in young people, um, even to the point of being teenagers or showing signs of early fatty liver damage with high levels of the enzymes from the liver um, showing inflammation going on. Starting at that age, you can count on liver destruction over a period of time if they don't change their ways, whether that be diet um, or um, just uh, using cannabidiol to help protect the, the liver in this process. Certainly, you want to change the diet to protect the liver in this case, but you also have cannabidiol to support and make progress in that area, calm that area down while people are making that transition to a healthier lifestyle. In summary, we're looking at all of the CBD effects in the liver, the anti-inflammatory effects, the anti-vascular or angiogenic, the extra blood vessels that form there. The fibrosis that typically occurs with, in liver disease is stopped with cannabidiol. You're seeing an actual antiviral effect of CBD on hepatitis C viruses. Not on B, unfortunately, but on hepatitis C, we're seeing that Almost 85% of the organisms were killed on the first exposure to CBD um, in cultures um, that hasn't been tested in humans at this point. We're seeing mitochondrial enhancement by using cannabidiol, a restoration of normal and metabolic uh, normalization of the liver and the hepatocytes. All of these changes going on in this key organ within our body. In addition, you've got the CBD side benefits. Everybody's talking about adverse side effects, but in this case, we're seeing an extraordinary enhancement of all of uh, your normal functions, the, the memory and the process, the task accomplishment, pain relief, anti-inflammatory and immune effects, as well as improved sleep from all of these things. So if you're looking at cannabidiol for dosing for PTSD or for liver disease, we're 
we're, I'm suggesting that in liposomals, you're using 10 to 15 milligrams or 10 to 15 pumps and tinctures, 60 milligrams per day. And if you're vaporizing, I like to use this and recommend this as a supplement that people are vaporizing cannabidiol uh, using uh, the formula that Elixinol has, the Respira, an excellent formulation. The effects are immediate, felt within seconds, and they really enhance the benefits as well as the effectiveness of CBD in taking care of many of these diseases. You, can, uh, you should adjust the dosage um, very early on to get the benefits uh, that you um, and the symptom relief that you need. And reassessing at uh, one day and one week are important for the provider to help know if they're on track with the right dosages. The best form for CBD is what you will take and what you'll continue to take. Exposure to the mucous membranes is excellent and it's an excellent way to get the CBD well absorbed in the body. So in summary of, of what we've gone through in an overall, liver disease is actually quite common. It's all around us. We're just not very much aware of it. There's an endocannabinoid deficiency in this organ, like in all the other organs that show that major pathology. CBD is effective for all of the pathologies, or at least most of the pathologies that are involved with liver disease and the other conditions. CBD restores the endocannabinoid system, it rebalances, and it gets people back to normal. CBD is legal in all of the U.S. states and in 22 countries, and so it can be used anywhere. I've put some of the materials together um, for this lecture and the references, and I've put them into a folder that's available to you at this particular website under the references folder. I've got to populate that. I've got to fill that up. I'll do that today and make that available for you so that you can take a look at that as well as the slides that I've produced here um, as a, a reference point um, and, um, and for learning. So I wanna thank you very much for listening to my presentation today and I'm really pleased that I could um, put this together for you and make you aware of how significant cannabidiol can be for liver disease. Thank you.